that. Yep. It's going. Okay, cool. Hi, um, my name's Emma. I'm Sarah. And we're presenting on American Born Chinese from the perspective of a teacher's guide and different ways in which this novel could be introduced. So for the first slide, I know there's a lot of photos on here and you can't really read the text, but this novel is a graphic novel and a lot of the stories are being told through the imagery that is presented. Um, and so the plot summary that I can summarize for everybody is it starts with the main character. And if you look in the upper left corner, he's in that little shot. His name is Jin Wang. And he recently moved from San Francisco to a suburb neighborhood where he's going to a school that is filled with predominantly white students. Um, and he has a lot of hard time identifying with the culture that he's a part of and identifying with himself and respecting himself and his heritage. Um, he's a first generation student in America. His parents immigrated from China to America during their time and he was born in America. So it starts with him and um, also shown with him in that scene is his friend that they develop their relationship throughout the um, story, but he's introduced in that picture because um, his friend, Wei Shen Sun, comes up to him and is talking in Chinese and trying to connect with him through cultural ways. And Jin just shuts, shuts that down right away because he is like, we're in America and he felt oppressed and he wanted to cast that on. But as the story goes, you'll see how those different themes are highlighted. Um, in the bottom below that, that's the other character who, there's three stories that interloop within this one plot narrative, and it does that just because it gives various representations, and that is the Monkey King, and he kind of acts as the uh, guidance to Jin, Jin and like how he is, you know, feeling about himself and his self-image and whatnot. Um, and... Jin, all he really wants is to be seen as like a white American boy and to fit in with his peers and to not have this cultural divide where he feels like he stands out. So the um, white American boy that is shown within these comic strips is Danny. And essentially, uh, Jin gets transferred to Danny and his persona in the third story within this whole um, graphic novel. And that's just a representation of how he wishes he was viewed within society. And the character in the middle acts as a allegory and is Danny's cousin named Chin Key. And he comes to America and is following Danny around and um, does stereotypical uh, Chinese immigrant things. And it just shows how Danny is represented and with his cousin and how he's feeling about that. So it's an interesting story that braids all together with like three pieces and it takes you on a journey about self-discovery and acceptance. And as I kind of already touched on and what a teacher would want to do when discussing about this or discussing a story is make the characters known just because there's a lot going on, like I said, and there's a lot of character dynamic and intermingling within the characters. So you would want to highlight which characters are who. Um, Jin being the main character, Danny being his alter ego, and the result of the herbalist's charm um, when Danny wishes that he was just a white boy and an all-American white boy. Um, the Monkey King and what he does and how he rules over Flower Fruit Mountain and how he's a leader of the alternative story. And uh, Shin Ki being the Monkey King's transformer, where he's like with white Jin. And this is where it gets confusing because there's a lot of like transformation and character transformation. But this character, as I pointed out in the first slide, is an allegory for racist Chinese stereotypes um, and just how Jin sees himself on the inside almost. And then, as I was talking about, Wei Shen Sun is a uh, um, boy who is Jin's best friend and it reminds Jin of his heritage and embraces his own identity and their relationship is um, 
kind of turbulent throughout, but there are a lot of important dynamics between those two. So it would be important as a teacher to touch on those things. And then a big point that you want to represent within this novel is the introduction to multiculturalism. And when talking about multiculturalism, giving a dictionary definition just so students can understand a general aspect of it being the presence of or the support of presence of several distant or distinct cultures or ethnic groups within society. So kind of uh, alluding to how this text has multiple, you know, cultural representations and multiple stories that kind of intertwine together. That is a relationship to the multiculturalism theory. And then within the plot, uh, these are various points that you would want to bring up with the family dynamic where he's a first generation American um, student and his family life where they embrace the, cult the Chinese culture and the fact that they're immigrants within America versus his social life where he feels ostracized and has this cognitive, cognitive dissonance with his identity and who he sees himself as which would be the second point I would go to is about his identity and this longing to be someone who he's not just because he feels ostracized within his settings. And that's really just a main point within this text and talking about Danny and his story and how that transformation goes and what that means for Jin and like how he recognizes that. And then just the various character interactions as I kind of touched on before, just because there is a lot of dynamic that goes into that. And clicking on this link below, this is a resource that uh, you could provide um, in your classroom. It essentially, <laughs> sorry, we're transferring over to it. It's not, essentially, is yeah. it not letting you? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and essentially what this is, is a interview from the author and talking about his own experience with multiculturalism within his life. That is the author of American Born Chinese. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, Past this. There's all these like questions and answers. Oh, up a little. <laughs> right there. Um, so there's these like questions that he is asked, and really he goes into his own life and his identity. And his identity now. This story is a reflection of his upbringing, but what he talks about currently, as you can see here, is his marriage is multicultural, not multiracial. And he really emphasizes that um, within this interview. And he talks about how he's a Chinese American and his wife is a Korean American and um, all the things that they have in common and just different life dynamics that they experience and how these portions of multicultural identity influences his interaction with the text and why he wrote it. So this would be a good resource to guide students into understanding multiculturalism and the author's influence on like multiculturalism with the text. So I found this to be like a sweet resource for that. So those would be a lot of um, some of the points that they would want to discuss on and just different teacher talking points. It's stuff like what challenges does Jin face um, being a first generation student and also being a child of immigrants. And I pointed to specific passages and portions within this text where there's a storyline about him interacting with his classmates and how he feels about that. Um, and then talking about the allegorical character, uh, Shin Ki and what he does for the plot. And if you, we turn to page 48, let me flip to it quick. There is artwork on here that depicts him in a way that is here. I'll, I don't know if you can kind of see it. So this artwork on these pages depicts him in a way that is extremely offensive and stereotypical. Um, and that is done on purpose. So really pointing that out to the students and having them analyze and guess what that means and what that does to the story. Um, and then the purpose of Danny, of course, and what he does for the narrative of Jin and like how that relationship works within the text and what he represents and just addressing how all three stories interact and what parts of multiculturalism is referenced within this novel. Um, these four points are like large points that I think you would want to touch on while reading the novel, but throughout there are so many different um, ways that you could express these thoughts. And the reason I like it to be a graphic novel and like showing this is because 
even within the photos, there is a lot of things being said without words addressing it. So students can dive into that idea and roll with that if they wish. Do you want me to click on this link or? No, that was, that was just a link that I used to help me um, come up with these questions. It was a resource that uh, had teachers looking at different lesson plans that were associated to this. So there is a link to that if you want to dive in more to that or not. So it's just attached there. And then moving on, I'm going to talk about graphic novels. Um, so there's a, there's a kind of a, an idea that graphic novels are not um, educational texts and they're often told not to be taught in schools. Um, I remember growing up, um, we had to do reading on our own. Um, and if a student were to pick a graphic novel, they were told that's not a real book. They need to find something else. Um, so this is a TED talk. Um, I'm not going to click on it, but the link is here. Um, that just talks about different ways that graphic novels are actually very beneficial. Um, so people think, like I was saying, they're primitive um, and it's just like childlike. Um, but then one of the joys of the comic medium is that there are very few words and often sometimes no words at all. So that allows comments to be translated in a way which is kind of still what the artist intended. Um, I've read that only 2.5% of traditional text-based books in the UK are actually translated. Um, so that means talking about multiculturalism, um, comics are very easily translated because since there's so few words, um, people in different cultures can easily read them despite the language barrier um, because there isn't too much language often. Um, and then in a, like a traditional novel, um, when things are translated, we know that some words in different languages don't exist. So the, the realness of the story does get lost. Um, and then this was a TED talk from the author himself. Um, so he was a math teacher um, and he was talking about how um, that comic books were told that he, he couldn't read comic books. Like I was saying before, when I was growing up, he also wasn't allowed to read comic books. Um, so unlike math textbooks, these comics lectures taught visually our students grow up in a visual culture. So they're used to taking in information the way that unlike other visual narrative like film or television or animation or video comics are what I call permanent in comic past, present and future. So basically he was going through um, how there was a situation at a school where he needed to film videos to teach his students because he had to be basically two places at once. Um, and often he made these comic videos and the students actually watch them rather than he, he had to make videos at first where he was just recording himself kind of like Emma and I are doing right now um, and the students told him you know Mr. Yang I, I thought you were boring in real life but on camera you're even worse so he started you know he went back to his his real love of comics um, which he was told he can't like because it's not educational enough um, and the students actually were engaged within the videos for the classes. And again, it was math class, but easily applicable to English. And then again, word from the author, um, this video, I'll play it in a little bit, but the author explains that his love of comics, um, his struggle with identity was the reason he created his book. Um, as Emma was touching on before, the author himself is also um, Chinese American. Um, so the main character in this American born Chinese is obviously as well. So part of it is while it's a fictional work, you can kind of, um, see that he probably picks up on his own life experience when reading or excuse me, when writing this book. Um, and then the short video uses Yang's art to tell the story and uses music that will intrigue the viewer to want to read and see what happens next. Um, it's like a cliffhanger the way they did this video. Um, and then, as I was saying, Yang was a teacher, so he knows how and why we should teach with comics. Um, he was definitely 
as I was mentioning about the TED talk from the last slide, he definitely challenged this notion that he was taught when he was a student that it wasn't educational enough. And even as he was teaching, he said, you know, I need to step away from my love of comics because I'm a teacher now. And because he always had the stereotype in his head telling him that um, graphic novels were not educational resources, he had to keep pushing it to the side. But when he finally embraced it, the students began to learn more. And then, well, he wrote a book. So I'll play this video, if it will let me. <laughs> I think being in America has really allowed me to understand my cultural heritage and my own struggle with cultural heritage is, is such an important part of my life experience that it was something that I wanted to struggle with on paper. I think the sound went away. Hi, my name is Gene Yang. Oh. <laughs> I am the creator of American Born Chinese, which is a graphic novel about creating an identity for yourself in America. Most of us have a desire to belong and to be part of something. Everyone comes from some sort of cultural heritage and has something to share. I chose American Born Chinese as the title because I feel like that accurately reflects the the identity that I've arrived at. My Chinese heritage definitely informs the way that I'm an American. This is far and away the best graphic novel that I've ever read. It was a, it was a, a character that you really cared about, a kid you really wanted to like, you wanted him to triumph, you wanted him to, to find a way to, to really come into his own. It has universal messages of, of belonging, of accepting who you are, uh, of accepting the culture, not only that you come from, but the culture that you find yourself in. Uh, I think that that just comes with being in a place like America. America can really be seen as a community of individuals. And, and comics is a very, very individualistic pursuit. When you're a comic book creator, you can tell these really intimate stories. It really is something that expresses who you are and the, and the choices you've made. What I've really appreciated about America is that it's allowed me to make my own choices about what pieces of you you can change and what pieces of you you can. And part of the, the journey of living in America has been for generations and generations that we are a nation of immigrants. And as immigrants come here from other countries, they bring their stories, they bring their traditions, they bring their family history, and then they have to make a new story. I have definitely appreciated the opportunities that America has given me, both struggling with the culture of my parents and establishing a, a culture of my own. So that video would definitely be a great resource to represent when talking about this text. Yep, and it's it's kind of done in a, in a cliffhanger way. So um, I feel like you could either I would probably start the lesson, the unit, when, before you start reading the book with it as to kind of show students kind of what they're going to be diving into um, from the author's view. Plus, since it's using actual images from the novel um, and the music, I feel like it's a, it's a cliffhanger, so it makes the students want to read more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's so many great things about this graphic novel and introducing multiculturalism to a classroom. So it's important to address all the points that go into it as we laid out through it, but there's so many other areas in which you could dive in and go along the plot with students. And it's a very enriching storyline, but it's awesome too, because it's like a fictional memoir, if you will. It has these exciting fictional aspects to it of like the monkey king and what that looks like and the different journeys that they go on with that so um it will really engage your students but also present these big picture ideas for them i agree so yeah <laughs>